Hey everybody. In this video I'm going to talk about taking a cheaper end power supply and making improvements to it to make it work better. I recently done a video the other day on um, an Nokia power supply and I kind of um, talked about this a little bit. But um, I figured I'd make a separate video on this. Here we have what appears to be a deer power supply but it's actually not that. This is originally an allied um, power supply case but um, now it has something a little bit different. The PCB in this unit is a SunPro, and it was the original PCB to the um, original power supply for the Mid Tower Lux back in 2007. The Case Gears Black Steel 580 watt. Now, of course, it couldn't actually do 580 watts. It was really, in actuality, a 250 300 watt power supply. And if you have ever seen the um, Johnny Guru article on the Sunbeam um, Black Steel power supply. There's two OEMs to these things. The older OEM is actually better, the SunPro. But the newer OEM, which you actually see on Johnny Guru's site, is a um, Zenhu Duh, I guess that's how you pronounce it. And it was very it was very cheaply built compared to this one. It takes two hands to get the cover off of this case. But um I'm gonna show you what I've done here. This power supply tested it last night and it works pretty well. This is how it looks. Now if you go back and watch um, some of my previous power supply videos, just run a search on QComputer channel for power supply or cheap power supply or something like that. You'll find um, where I use this board as a reference. <clears throat> and what I'll do is I'll include some photos of this board prior to my modifications. But basically, um, what I did was I, see back in 2008, I took this PCB out of the original black steel case. And this sat on my shelf for quite a few years and then eventually was sitting in that bin down there for who knows how long. And I figured, hey, I finally decided I'll go ahead and do something with it. <clears throat> but basically, um, it needed some wires, so I took the wires, although they were kind of thin, off of a Diablo Tech power supply and soldered them into here so we have our end result we have a 20 plus 4 pin connector two Molex on this cable and a floppy two Molex and a SATA on this cable now of course that's not a whole lot of connection but it's perfect for an older system that may have a SATA hard drive because <clears throat> I, of course I'm going to be treating this thing as probably a 250 watt power supply that's pretty much all it can do. Maybe 300 watts. Anyways, um, what I did was this power supply here, it needed some upgrades. It had two very tiny little Y capacitors over here on the EMI filtering stage. It lacked the coil you see there and those two X capacitors. Those were not there. I saw those in myself. Another thing I could have done was I could have um, installed a bridge rectifier here but I wasn't exactly sure how the pinout would work if this power supply casing had the um, screw holes available I could have actually added in a passive PFC coil I got two of them in my bin down there <clears throat> another thing I did was I replaced the um, HEC um, 470 microfarad caps with these 470 microfarad caps the um, HTC caps in reality were 330 microfarad caps. I tested them at, on the um, LCR meter at school and they were actually 330 so I replaced those with these which seemed to be a bit better. I have not touched the silicon. This, all the silicon is still original. The switching transistors and the secondary side rectifiers. 
This power supply has DC to DC conversion on 3.3 volt side. So we actually have a um, a 40, you say a 40N03GP um, component down there. I believe it's probably <clears throat> some sort of transistor. Not sure if it's an MPN, PMP, I mean a BJT, JFET, or a MOSFET. It's probably, I would say, pro possibly a MOSFET. Not sure if it's in channel or what, but um, anyways, it takes 5 volt power and, and regulates it down to a clean 3.3 volts. And of course, I've not touched the capacitors yet. There's some more things I could do to this thing. I really could be replacing those caps and everything. And um, I decided to use this deer case because it has this little um, daughter board here with another X capacitor, another coil, and two Y capacitors. That way, this thing has a complete EMI filter stage. Another thing your sheet power supply lacked was MOVs, surge protection. It now has MOVs. I'm going to get my flashlight so you can see. The MOVs are right down there. You might be able to see them. They're heat shrinked. There's two in between these two capacitors on the side between the heat sink and the caps. So now this power supply also has surge protection. <clears throat> so now this power supply will not interfere with the C radios and other electronic equipment um, on the same AC line. And um, it now has um, transient surge protection. So it's definitely an improvement there. So that being said, you got to see this one. And here's another power supply I'm about to work on. This is also a Sun Pro. This was originally out of a Raid Max 420 watt um, included with case power supply. I'm going to explain what I'm going to do to this one. It's going to need a full recap. Those, HC, those HEC capacitors on the primary, those have got to go. Because I'm sure they're not 680 microfarads, they're probably 470. <clears throat> I'll put in some real 680 microfarad caps on that side. As you can see, we had this real cheap excuse of a um, long filter coil. All they did was took some thin wire and wrapped around a, um, you know, um, a ferrite core. Just wrapped it around and then soldered it to the board. Here we have two um, standard disc capacitors. Those are not safety capacitors. If they fail, they may go short circuit. You don't want to have that on your um, high voltage side, your AC side here. Those will get replaced with two of those. That coil will get replaced with one of these. And also, this thing needs surge protection. It also lacks those MOVs. And let's see, right here are two MOVs I want to install. And of course, this thing is slap full of JEE capacitors, and those are infamous with me for failure. I've had to re recap so many power supplies with these. And um, <clears throat> I'll be replacing those. Another thing this power supply will be getting is a um, X capacitor right there. So I'll be installing the X capacitor right there. And now pretty much conclude all the really big needed updates for this thing. Then it should be pretty decent. And let me go show you another power supply that I may bother to mess with. And of course, get a good look in this bin of all these all this power supply stuff I have. Trust me, I got a bunch of it. And let me see if I can locate the board I'm looking for. Kinda hard to do this with one hand. Because <laughs> I'm holding the camera with one hand and trying to do this. Here's another power supply I may bother to mess with. This is one of those cheap in cores IT power supplies. With this one you can see I've already added in two coils. Though I still need to add in two Y capacitors and an X capacitor somewhere. I'll try to replace those diodes with a rectifier bridge because I need that space there for an X capacitor. <clears throat> And of course those diodes are real crappy as you can see they're really small so probably one amp a piece. You see our primary side transistors are decent those are 
13009s, you typically find those in probably a 300 watt supply. So this one's got enough primary for half decent use. And here's the surprising thing about this power supply. Both of these power supplies use a two transistor 5 volt standby circuit. This one has an IC design 5 volt standby design. This is much better. And it's real funny to find this in such a cheap print power supply. And um, I always knew this one had IC because um, when you flip the power switch on, on the back of this thing, there was a one second delay between um, the time you hit the switch and the time the 5 volt standby come alive. So that was a definite sign of an IC 5 volt standby circuit. But here's just a good example of what I'm talking about this thing. This one also uses DC to DC conversion on the 3.3 volt rail. And um, you see that part in the center? That is, I believe, a fast recovery diode, 16 amp. I believe that's for 12 volts. So we got 16 amps available for the 12 volt side. And have a look here. We have a SB3040BT or PT. I believe that's a shocky component. See, 30 amps. And of course that also um, supplies the 3.3 volts so I may be fed up a little bit. Not really sure yet. I got some caps missing because I pulled some decent caps off and I left all those crappy food jews on there. I'll be taking those off and putting in some half decent capacitors. And I'll show you something else here. Currently this power supply runs a fan directly off of 12 volts. However, the PCB is silt screen where you can run a fan circuit. I mean, a, a fan control circuit. If you look, you can see a TR2 right there. That's for a thermistor to go near the heat sink. And J38 and J35 are jumpers. You can see where a Zener diode goes, a transistor goes. Those are other parts of your fan circuit. Now, of course, um, it's either that or I can use this fan circuit here out of an FSP power supply. You just simply give it 12 volts and hook up a thermistor, and it will regulate the fan for you. And that coil there looks pretty wimpy. I'll have to look and see if I have any coils that'll fit this. So I'm not real sure what I'm going to do with this one yet, but I'm definitely going to go ahead and start working on this one. So anyways, this, this concludes a video of some ways you can take a cheaper end power supply and modify it. Now, you need to have good experience with soldering, and of course, keep in mind, with power supplies, especially when you're uh, working in them, on this side, you're working with potentially high voltage, especially between the bridge rectifier or diodes to the back here. We're talking three to 350 volts in this doubler circuit. So, you definitely be very careful when you're soldering in this area that you don't leave any bits um, laying around that can short something out. And of course, you want to let the power supply sit for at least a few hours before you ever open it up. So that way bleeder resistors have time to discharge those capacitors. So anyways, any questions or comments, feel free to ask and thanks for watching.